our core values. We are showing love, we are impacting families, and we are attempting to do everything in excellence. Why? Because the MT Zion family is a loving ministry, loving God through loving people. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad therein. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you for uh, the opportunity that uh, we've been graced and given uh, to be able to engage and discuss those things that are pertinent and important as it relates to clarity and understanding the word of the living uh, God. If you will bow with me now as we prepare to go into the study. God, again, we honor and we thank you for this privilege to spend time in your word, to witness your wonders. Uh, we thank you for your spirit, uh, who is the helper and the teacher uh, and the witness of God. And we uh, ask for the grace necessary and covet the gift for this particular assignment, the gift of teaching. And I ask that you would stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my tongue, that your kingdom come and that your will would be done and that your word would become the truth that we treasure, that gives us the grace necessary to triumph over every trial, tribulation, and tragedy that we might encounter in life. Now allow us to speak and teach a word in season that it would bring comfort, uh, correction, and guidance to your precious people in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are honored and privileged to be able to rejoice and be glad uh, in it. Uh, whatever the device is that you use, whether it be a paperback Bible or a smart device of any kind, uh, if you don't mind holding it up right where you are, repeat after me. This is the word of truth. As I apply the principles, that this word provides, I have the provisions that this word promises. I will receive teaching, that's information. I will receive preaching, that's inspiration. I will receive healing, that's implementation. What's required of me is my permission, my participation, and my expectation as I give God all of these my life is better my life is better my life is better my brothers and my sisters we are again um, 
trusted with the assignment uh, to show the relevance of the Word of God even in trying uh, times uh, to validate and to prove uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt that there's nothing you and I uh, can face uh, presently and or in the future uh, that this omniscient, all-knowing God, uh, omnipresent, he's everywhere and wherever, all at the same time, and omnipotent, he has all power. This is the God that we subscribe to and render our service and our lives. On last week, uh, we talked about sacrificial living. If we're going to deal with transition, if we're going to deal with transition, and we're using the book of Romans, chapter number 12, uh, as the foundational text for the discussion. And um, we dealt with verses 1 and 2 on last week. Through this week, we'll deal with verses 3 through 5. And we're talking about subtopically uh, transitioning with grace transitioning with grace so how do we deal with transition uh, one of the things that uh, we have to realize and recognize uh, that if we're honest and we're truthful about it we have to learn how to deal with it with grace so transitioning um, to move from one state to another state or uh, one realm to another realm it is inevitable but the reality is we have to be graced to do it. So if you'll join me now as we peruse um, Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 5. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 5 uh, will be the text of focus uh, for uh, today. And you'll find these words written for I say uh, to you through uh, the grace given unto me. Uh, to everyone that is among you, not to think of yourself or himself more highly than he ought to think, uh, but to think soberly. Now, I want to emphasize uh, that phrase of the text right there, uh, to think soberly uh, is where we're going um, to spend some time analyzing, to think soberly uh, as God uh, has dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. Verse 4 goes on to say, for as many, for we are many members in one body. How many? We are many in one body. But all the members do not have the same function. Hallelujah. We are many members in one body, but we don't all have the same function. And then conclusion, I think it reads something like this, verse 5, uh, so we uh, being many are but one body in Christ and individually, uh, individually members of one another. I want to, I want to, I want to uh, parlay that. We're, we're transitioning uh, with grace. We're transitioning with grace. The focus of this study has been rooted in giving clarity and understanding as we examine the keys that will be user-friendly in helping us understand this. Um, uh, the focus has been uh, rooted in helping us understand how to deal with, how to deal with and address life's changing events and experiences, life changing events and experiences. And so we're going to use the Apostle Paul's formula um, of one of doctrine and duty uh, as our platform from which to study. On last week, we reminded you that verses or chapters 1 through 11, Paul laid a doctrinal or teaching foundation on uh, the truths of God um, <clears throat> uh, that should be practiced in all churches. Then in chapter 12 through chapter 16 is where we find out now he shifts from dealing with the doctrinal side to the duty or the responsibility of now what you and I are supposed to be doing. Because it is inevitable, my brothers and my sisters, sons and daughters, that seasons change. Seasons change. Uh, um, we're getting ready in the not too distant future. I'm assuming, unless uh, the Lord says or sees, shows us otherwise, 
to see the changing of seasons. The leaves are going to go from being one color to another color to eventually not being on the tree at all. Why? Because it goes through transition, 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 transition. Let's examine verses 3 through 5 uh, to give us the platform by which uh, will help us gleam and gain understanding uh, prayerfully uh, from this passage. Uh, for listen to Paul talks, for Paul says, for I say uh, through the grace given. Okay, I'm not speaking this in and of my own self, but God has graced, he's favored, he benefited my life and given it unto me to everyone that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Okay, so he says, don't don't be arrogant, but I, I, I need you to be disciplined. Watch the text talk. But he says to think soberly, to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So there are different levels of faith. That's not the emphasis of what we're going to discuss uh, today, but uh, he says think soberly. So now if I'm going to deal with transition, if I'm going to deal with transition, I think the, the apex of this verse is centered in how should we think. Now, you've heard me say it, and I've heard it before, words become thoughts, uh, or thoughts become words, and words become deeds, and deeds uh, become actions, and actions become habits, and habits determine your character, and character determines your destiny. I'll say it again, thoughts become words, and words become deeds, and deeds become actions, and actions become habits, and habits determine your character, and your character uh, the, uh, 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 then determines your destiny, okay? Uh, so when, 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 when I examine this, my, my thoughts play a major uh, role or, or leads to the different outcomes of my life. What am I, what am I thinking? So Paul suggests that if we're going to deal with transition, this transitioning season where our world has changed, whether we want it to or not, it's changed. Uh, we're dealing with school. We're dealing with finances. We're dealing with health. Uh, we're dealing with occupations, uh, et cetera. Everything is changing. Everything is changing. Everything is changing and everything uh, has changed and so whether we want to use technology or not is no longer an option it's necessary okay um, the way that we were able to frequent places and how long we can stay in places they've changed being serious about health care and conditioning lorenzo you ain't giving the information that you told me you were going to give me thought i would just parenthetically throw that in uh, right there to make sure i get i get it before we leave uh this evening uh, but uh, uh and understanding the importance of dealing with transition we can't escape it so now since i can't escape it and i'm going to have to deal with it Paul gives us a foundational truth that we have to apply. Uh, number one, he says we must think soberly. We must think soberly. We must think soberly. We must think soberly. We must think not 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 from the perspective of 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 of, of alcoholism or uh, anything of that nature. But when it this text is referring to uh, thinking uh, soberly. It, 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 the, the, the word sober in this text means to uh, think with a sound mind. And then when you do the word study, it means to operate with self-control. So he says, I've got to have thoughts that think, uh, that keep me in control even when it looks like things are out of control not happening and going in the direction or the way that it could or it should be going. But let's, let's tie both words in. So the, the, watch this. The, the word think is, 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 is 
tied to the word sober here. Now, the word think means to exercise your mind. So could this season be a season where we've been thrust into having to exercise our mind? Are y'all understanding me this way? Okay. It's making you think. <laughs> okay. It's making you look and become creative in this time. Maybe you've been sitting on an idea. Okay. Maybe you've been trusting a system that you possibly should have never trusted. Ugh. So, so, so the Bible, yeah, tells us that even in this season that we find ourselves in transition. We, we, we've been equipped to deal with it. So he tells us to think soberly. Think, 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 think soberly. Think soberly, think soberly, think soberly. So, so, so it's, 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 it's like a little kid sitting and being in the front of some candy. Candy right there in reaching distance. And yet that young person has to operate with some level of discipline because they've been told they can't have it. Okay, all right. Or uh, it's not time. Okay, and, and now I've got to fight the urge to go after something that might not necessarily be good for me, even though it tastes good to me. What, what, what are you going after that tastes good to you, but it's not good for you? It's not good for you. Uh, uh, we 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 were we were uh, these these workers uh, these essential workers are working hard and so uh, in kind services try to do little things and uh, we were uh, we were we were out uh, eating Sunday and um, we were at an establishment that uh, is known for its desserts and. Uh, uh, Lorenzo convicts me at the table while everybody's getting strawberry tall cakes and, and strawberry shortcakes and uh, all type of different cakes and pies. And uh, he says, operate with some restraint. Uh, uh, conviction hit me because you all know if you've been a part of the Zion family any length of time, you know I love sweets. I love sweets. And so to watch uh, our pastor, some of our pastors, not all of them, some of them and my daughter just get dessert. They operate with no restraint. They they didn't they didn't uh, they 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 didn't they didn't hold back nothing and 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 got it and then uh, uh, my daughter went over to my parents' house and ate it right in our faces. You know, just then, just then, joyed every drip drop of it. Yeah, uh, y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Uh, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really going through withdrawals right now. But in the midst, <laughs> I'm operating with a level of self-restraint. Self-discipline, self-control, okay? And you can do it also. You don't have to allow what's happening around you to happen in you, even though there are some things that will happen to you. So the first thing that Paul tells us that we've got to think soberly. We've got to think uh, not emotionally, because so many of us have gotten in trouble because we've thought emotionally. We've spoken out of turn. We've acted out of turn. And in some cases, we've lived out of turn. But then look at verse 4 with me, if you will. So not only must we think soberly, but the second thing, when, when, I, when, I, when I recall verse 4, it says, for as we are many members in one body, one body. 
And it says, but all of the members do not have the same function. Okay, uh, all right. Let's see, can we, can we analyze this? He says, first of all, I've got to get my mind right. I've got to exercise sound thinking, okay, sober thinking, self-control thinking. And in other words, I've got to be disciplined in how I think. Um, um, one, 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 one great preacher uh, like, like, like to, like to go deep sea fishing, and then they got a boat, and they learn how to navigate the boat, and uh, uh, the 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 guide or the trainer taught him how to navigate uh, even in inclement conditions back to shore. Okay, and one day he was out there on the water by himself, as he says, and. Uh, all everything in him was telling them to go one way but he remembered the instructions he remembered the instructions uh that he had received he said always trust the compass always trust the compass always trust the compass and the compass for the believer is the word of God. I, I, I don't always see it, and, and, and sometimes it looks like it's leading me in one direction, but always trust. Thank you, Jesus. Always trust the compass. And so now look at the text talk. He says, we are many members. There, 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 there are many of us uh, in one body, okay? Uh, but even though being many members, we don't all have the same function, okay? Are, are y'all with me? Um, um, uh, so my function, my function might not be your function. And now this is the second thing. If we're going to deal with transition, not only must we think soberly, but the second thing we've got to think, we must think uh, singularly. Okay? Somebody say singularly. Right where you are, think, you got to think singularly. Now, what, 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 what the text says even though the hands aren't the feet and the feet uh, aren't the eyes and the eyes aren't the ears, but if all of it is a part of one body, we have to think as one. Oh, Jesus. One of the challenges uh, that we deal with uh, in any, any arena, uh, the church, uh, sports, etc., you can be super, you can be superlative, or you can be super at doing what you do. But if the other parts of the team don't don't perform up to their capacity or up until the level in which they need to operate, it affects the whole operation. L listen, okay, uh, have you ever have you ever stumped your foot before? Have you ever hit your foot on anything? Okay, uh, did it just hurt the foot? You felt that, well, Eric can talk first. <laughs> he, he can speak, he can speak experientially. It affects the whole body. The whole body. It just doesn't stay in the area that was affected. And Bishop Eddie Long used to say all the time, he says, we're equal in essence, but we're different in function. We're equal in essence, but we're different. Everybody don't. So now, if it's not your function, why are you trying to do it? Even though some people can walk on their hands, their hands not made to be walked on. And eventually that imbalance is going to affect other areas of the body because there's been a misuse or abuse of an area. Teach a waske. Okay? So, so, so Paul says, first of all, uh, we have to think soberly. But then secondly, he tells us we must think singularly. Um, um, my, my, my brother, uh, Pastor Grover, uh, uh, Levant Grover, put out a very interesting statement. Um, he says that uh, the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans, um, Dr. Scott actually wrote this statement. Uh, one of, uh, one of our nation's premier preachers, um, and he says the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans, 
he says that the Democrats have to fall in love with their candidate, have to learn to love their candidate. He says that the Republicans uh, stay in line. And he says that this is one of the few times we might need to act <laughs> like Republicans. Because now, a house divided against itself can not stand. So you look for, you, you, see, you, you have to address those that are causing division, where, where, where there is no singularity. And so could it be it is not the devil that's the hold up? It's that we've not learned to think singularly. Okay? Okay? putting all of our thoughts and ideals and way of perceiving things together. L let, me, let, me, let, me support, let me support it even more. Uh, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 1 and 10, and he says that we speak the same thing, that there be no division among us. So when there is no singularity, that's where the vision is. And, 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 and what we have to be able and learn to do is address where the division is. Address it. Because now we won't transition effectively and efficiently because of unaddressed. So when you make it, okay, singularity means that I provide or I think it's in the best interest of us all and not just in the best interest of myself. That, 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 that's, what, that's what he's saying, the singular way of thinking, okay? Well, uh, 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 when we make it about us, uh, when we make it about an individual and not about the total soul. When, when, when I see things, I see it how it affects us holistically. But a lot of areas uh, in ministry and in life, they only see how it affects them. And that's the holdup. There has to be um, uh, uh, a singular way of thinking in, in order, in order, because now what Paul says that we're, we're, we're one body. So now we're wearing the same uniform. We're on the same team. We believe in the same God. Why is there so much divisiveness? Because it's selfish thinking and not singular thinking. Ooh, teach boy. Okay. So I can't be selfish in how I exercise my mind. Okay. I have to think and move in a way that my thinking ties in with the overall thinking of our body. Okay. Many members, one body. Many members. One by, and and uh, another translation said, many parts for one body. Watch this, and you won't see all other parts. But when the body functions correctly, that's how you know that it's there. So he says we have to think sober. We have to think singularly. But then look at verse 5 with me as we conclude this. Uh, we, 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 he says, in conclusion, he says, so we, watch this, being, uh, so, so we being many members of one body, uh, in who? In Christ. And individually members of one another. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So he tells us to think how? Soberly. He tells us to think how? Singularly. But then lastly, he tells us that we must think synergistically, okay, okay, we got to think synergistically, harmoniously, okay, or, or what, what do you mean, what do you mean, so he says that we have different functions, okay, all right, you can't play my position, I can't play your position, but we need all the positions to come together, okay, all right, uh, what, what you all don't see, there's, there's, there's a team of people, uh, and each one of them have a different function and responsibility. 
and all of them as they operate and do what they are assigned to do and I do what I'm assigned to do it all comes together even though we don't have the same function okay they, 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 they were up here in preparation before I come up and I come up what I do we do the, they've done the sound check uh, put on the headset I take the stage and who you get to see you get to see me but I would not be as effective in my presentation if the others weren't doing their part are y'all understanding what I'm saying uh, just go ahead and ask yourself self are you doing your part? Okay, all right, all right. Don't look at anybody else. <laughs> don't, don't talk about anybody else. Uh, 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 as the young folks would say, miss me from that. I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear uh, uh, all that other stuff. What part are you supposed to be playing that you are inconsistently or not at all playing? Yeah. Let me get out of this. So he, 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 can close, he concludes by uh, telling us uh, that we are members of one another. Uh, uh, the king says, I can't be what I ought to be if you're not what you ought to be. And you can't be what you ought to be if I'm not what I ought to be. We, we, we need each other. Most deaf, one of uh, the actors, uh, rappers, uh, uh, activists uh, out of the Bronx uh, area. And, and now, even though he's the one rapping, all of them are vibing with him. Rock with me, roll with me. They're flowing with him. There's a synergistic oneness that has come that allows the communication to be as one. Are you going to rock with me? Vibe with me? Move with me? Are we going to move in the same direction as we strive to please God? Ride it out and become all that we are capable of becoming. Houses, homes would be so much better if there was sober thinking, if there was singularity, and if there was synergistic thinking. Because the proverbial writer reminds us that as a man thinketh, so is he. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, believers are praying. God, we bless and thank you for this privilege that you've graced and given us to spend time in your word. And I pray in the name of Jesus as we are dealing with transition that we conform and commit our thoughts to line up with what your thoughts are. That we think singularly and not selfishly. And last but not least, that now all of the parts come together synergistically to operate as one, even though we have different functions. I thank you in advance 